All right, what up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna continue our mechanics of material sequence and talk about unsymmetric bending. And in particular, what I hope to do is describe unsymmetric bending to you as it relates to an asymmetrical cross-section or biaxial bending. And hopefully within that, we'll talk about how to identify the principal axes and then determine the orientation of the neutral axis all right, so before we get all crazy into unsymmetric bending, let's think about our original bending formula because that's kind of the background that you need before you get into this. And this flexure formula, I, I affectionately called it the most selfish equation in this world, this negative my over i, and it was based on a transversely loaded beam and the loading was in plane the cross section that when it was derived had one axis of symmetry and so that when we looked at a cross section if i just take took some generic rectangular cross section and let's say that this internal moment were applied positively so that it was causing compression at the top. This thing had a width B and a height H. And in particular, I could take a look at this cross section, locate the centroid, determine where the neutral axis was, you, and calculate the moment of inertia so I could calculate the normal stress or convert this moment and determine the normal stress caused by this bending moment on the cross section. And so here, if this is the neutral axis location, we had a stress profile that varied linearly from top to bottom and we define this positive y direction from z y equals zero at the neutral axis pointing upwards plus y this top was in compression and the bottom was in tension and everything was great assuming that the cross section had at least one axis of symmetry and the loading was in plane so that the bending happened in plane so the question we're going to try to answer here is what happens if the cross section isn't symmetric? What if it's just some random looking potato looking cross section? Or what if the loading and the bending don't happen in plane? How do I calculate the normal stress? Is my, is my stress profile still linear? Now, before I get really into it and try to answer these questions for us, you know, one of the things I could do is I could ch I can mess around with this cross section drawing. I could assign a coordinate system that matches this positive Y. And at the face of the cut, I could say that my positive Y goes from the centroid of the geometry upwards this way. The X axis would come through the axial direction of the, of the beam and it would be coming out of the screen, if you will. And my positive Z would be in this direction here towards the left on this face of this cut. And this moment could be expressed as a vector like this. So here, using the right-hand rule, you put your thumb, your right thumb, in the direction of that double-headed arrow, and the moment would curl, causing compression at the top and tension at the bottom. This moment would equal mz, or better yet, I could say mz has a magnitude of m. So that's one way I could describe this with the coordinate system, but we'll talk more about that. I'll repeat this again so that you can see it more than once, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta look at things more than once just to get a feel for what it's like. The question is, is, is this flexure formula, is this linear stress profile, are these things still valid if I have an asymmetrical cross section? So let's say I do, instead of with this moment applied, let's say my cross section is some random looking potato deal some asymmetric section so here's my cross section let's say it has some centroid right here this is the geometric centroid we'll define a coordinate system from this geometric centroid we'll say up y is upwards here we'll say z is to the left and x is coming out of the screen and my moment is applied as before the only difference is that my cross section now is some random arbitrary thing all right, so let's consider this asymmetrical cross section with this moment applied. And let's say that this moment is applied on the z-axis, it's rotating about the z-axis, and the z-axis also represents the neutral axis. So that when I look at this, I have compression above the z-axis or this neutral axis and tension below it. And because z is a neutral axis, we can go ahead and say that this stress variation, the stress here along the z-axis is zero, and it's going to vary linearly as I go away from this neutral axis. So my stress profile in 2D might look like this. So here, because I've assumed Z is my neutral axis, again, I know that my 
My normal stress varies linearly as I go a distance away and I have zero normal stress at Z here. And if you recall from how the flexure formula was derived, it essentially was based on equilibrium. And so if I had, let's say, the X direction and I look at this entire cross section, I sub forces in the X, which in this case is coming out of the page right here, I would say that, the, that if I could integrate over all the forces here, I need the compression force resultant to equal the tension force resultant so that my sum of the forces in the X is equal to zero. And the way that this was expressed was that you would take an infinitesimal area, this little dA, an increment of area at some location, let's say here, this would be some distance z and some distance y. And we would say, let's sum the forces. And the force on this little increment was d sigma times dA. If I want the entire cross section, I have to integrate. And notice here on this location that I've chosen, this dA at a positive y and a positive z, that is in compression. So technically that would be a negative here. And I would integrate over the entire area. And this would equal zero. And what this showed, at least, previously was that the neutral axis has to pass through the geometric centroid in order for this to be true. So now I'm going to look at moments about Z. And if I take moments about Z, this should equal this M, this moment resultant on the inside or at the face of that cut. And if I say a positive moment is this way, and if I, again, if I want to take, if I have a force resultant sigma dA on this element, and I've got to multiply that by the arm, which for moments about Z would be the Y arm, Y sigma dA. And if I integrate, let's see, this would be, a, this would be this Y sigma dA would be a positive moment. So I'm gonna have a positive sign. And this thing, when I solve this, this should be equal to M. And this, if you recall from substituting, let's say the linear relationship of the stress profile. So if I had some random stress at some distance Y here, right here, I knew that the normal stress sigma over y is equal to sigma max over c. And because this normal stress here was in compression, we gave it a sig negative sign, as in like the magnitude is a negative compressive stress. We gave it a negative sign because the magnitude was sigma max, but it was causing a compressive stress at the top. And so here, if I substitute for sigma here, we got this relationship, which ended up becoming the, the flexure formula. But now, since we have an asymmetric cross-section, we don't have symmetry about the a vertical axis like we did before. We gotta check moments about the Y. And that has to equal zero because I only have single axis bending. I have bending only about one axis. So I need to make sure I have no moment applied in the Y direction. So that moment resultant should equal zero when I integrate this entire stress component. And so here, this would be a positive Y moment in this case here. So this, again, this increment of four sigma dA right here with an arm of Z is causing a negative moment about the y-axis integrated over the y is equal to zero. And again, if I substitute this relationship over here into there, and in order for this thing to be true, I need this term here to equal zero. And this and this term is called the product of inertia. And if I want everything that I've said to be true, that assumption that this moment and this z is a neutral axis and I have linear variation, I need this product of inertia and I need equilibrium to be true and I need this iyz to be equal zero.